The school year is well underway and that means parent teacher conferences will be coming soon as well. Now teaching in a global pandemic introduces all kinds of new challenges and experiences that teachers need to address and this year we'll be dealing with virtual parent teacher conferences. In this video I want to give you some tips for how you can manage this entire process digitally using a combination of Google Forms, Google Calendar, and Google Meet. Now, parent-teacher conferences, uh, there's a couple of challenges. First is scheduling them. Like, how? what is the most efficient way to allow parents to pick their time, make sure you don't have duplicate appointments, give yourself a little break now and then. Uh, so that's, you know, challenge number one. And then challenge number two is, how do you actually facilitate a virtual conference? Like, how do you get the link to this parent? How do you make sure the parents can actually join the Google Meet session in a simple, easy way? This video will walk you through that entire process. Now let's take a quick look. There's three components we're going to be using. Let me take you through that process really quickly and then we'll get into the details. Now the first thing that we're going to do together is I'm going to help you create a Google form that will serve as kind of the registration system. Your parents will um, access this form, they'll fill out their information and they will pick their preferred conference time. Now I'm going to be using a couple of tools that are going to um, eliminate the possibility for duplicate uh, appointment slots so two parents aren't picking the same time. So we'll do that together. I've got a template for you and I'll walk you through the entire process. Secondly, we're going to move over to Google Calendar. We're going to set up your calendar with appointment slots so that you can move that information from forms into your calendar and calendar is going to serve as kind of your uh, dashboard that tells you which parent is showing up at what time and all the links and details that you need to have an effective conversation with those parents. Thirdly, I'm going to show you how to send all of that information to the parents so that they have everything they need to join your virtual session using Google Meet at the time that they've chosen. That's the overview. There's lots of important links in the description for this video. I've got templates, resources, step-by-step -step instructions. So feel free to pause this video, look at those um, notes in the description, press play again, and follow me through this entire process. Let's get started. First thing we're gonna do together is build a form. This form is gonna serve as the registration page that parents will fill out to request their a conference time slot. Now I've created a template for you. You can use my template modify it as needed, it's probably the easiest option. Go ahead and pause the video, look in the description for the video, you'll see the link to the template uh, down there. Now I have the template ready to go as well. When you click on that link in the description, it'll bring you to a page just like this. You're simply gonna click the Use Template button up at the top, and that will give you a copy of my form that you can edit and make changes to. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is just kinda highlight the key things that you need in this form. Um, First of all, you want to make sure you collect the parent's name and their email address. The email address is very important. That's where we're going to be sending a confirmation of the appointment time and the Google Meet link. So they have to give us a good email that they check regularly. The other thing that you want to include is a list of your available t conference time slots. Now you're going to have to kind of look at your schedule, decide how you want to organize this. Do you want 10 minute? conferences, 15, 20, 30, it's up to you. I just want a drop down list of all of my available time slots. You can see them here. I recommend that you use one question. It's gonna be a long list, but trust me, it's gonna work out okay. Now what we're gonna do in order to prevent duplicate um, reservations is we're gonna use a Google Form add-on called Choice Eliminator. Now an add-on is a, like an app that you add into Google Forms that adds additional features or functions. Choice Eliminator is going to monitor our form. When a parent comes in, if they select Thursday from 5 to 5.15, Choice Eliminator will then remove that selection from the drop-down list. Now the very first parent who looks at your form is going to see a really long list, but that list is going to get shorter and shorter and shorter after every parent confirms uh, or picks their time slot. Now let me show you how to set up Choice Eliminator. It's very easy. Uh, we're going to go ahead and click on the snowman top right corner of Google Forms and scroll down to add-ons, little puzzle piece. This is the add-on gallery and I'm just going to search for Choice Eliminator. Uh, there are two of them. Uh, you'll see Choice Eliminator 2 and Choice Eliminator Lite. Uh, both would work just for simplicity. We're going to use Choice Eliminator Lite. Uh, go ahead and click on that and install it. Now you may have trouble at this point. 
Uh, if your district restricts add-ons, you may not be able to install this until they have approved this uh, add-on for use. So you either would need to email your IT director. The other option is that you can use a personal Gmail account to create this form. Everything should work just fine. Install that add-on through your personal Gmail account and then continue through uh, the process. Um, I've already have Choice Limiter installed, so I'm good to go. Once you have it installed, you will see the puzzle piece will appear at the top of your form. We're going to click there, and this lists all of our add-ons, and we're going to select Choice Eliminator Lite from the list. Um, and seriously, this is the easiest uh, part of the whole process. Uh, we're simply going to um, open, click Configure for Choice Eliminator. It's going to open down here at the bottom, and uh, we just have to click this one option, okay? So there's only, uh, Choice Number and Light only works with drop-down question types. We only have one drop-down question in our form, so it's the one that says, please select a time. I'm simply going to say, eliminate choices. That's it, I'm done. So as soon as someone picks one of those options, Choice Eliminator will remove it from the list. All right, good deal. We've got Choice Eliminator configured. Now there's one additional add-on that I recommend using. You don't have to, it just makes your life a little bit easier. Um, depending on how long you're going to allow your parents to register for conferences, you really don't want to have to open up your form every day and see if anybody submitted it. I'm going to use an add-on called Form Postman to notify me via email anytime someone fills this out. Once someone fills out the form, that's my reminder to, hey, I need to confirm that time, add it to my calendar, and do the remainder of the, the steps that I'll show you. So let's go ahead and configure Form Postman as well. Same process. We're going to open up Add-ons, search for Postman. There's a lot of add-ons that would do this. If you have a favorite, go for it. Again, this just emails a confirmation to you. I'm going to install Form Postman. I'll go to my puzzle piece and open it up. Form Postman. And we're going to configure it similar to what we did with um, Choice Eliminator. Configure. Um, I'm not going to send the parent a confirmation right now. Um, so I'm going to send um, my email address. Okay, so it's going to send it from me. Um, and then I'm going to save this. <clears throat> And every time someone completes this, it'll send um, to admin. That's me. I'm the admin. I'm not sending it to the form um, respondent. I'm skipping that. We're going to do that later. And we're good to go. It's just going to fill out and tell me every all the information sent in the form. That's it. Okay? So I'm just going to save that as well. Form Postman can do a lot of other things, but I'm just using it so that I get a notification when a form is filled out. That completes step number one, configure their, your form. Now at this point, you can send this form to your parents, okay? We can complete the other two steps at our leisure, but get this form out, you can send it via email, you can post it to your class or school website. Uh, if you use Remind, you can post it there, put it in Google Classroom as an announcement. However you communicate with parents, get the link to this form to them and allow them to make a reservation. While you are collecting those reservations, we're gonna go ahead and work on steps two and three. Let's move on to step number two, configuring your calendar. Now again, you can do this process while your parents are filling out the form and requesting their conference time. I'm gonna go ahead and log into my Google Calendar and we are gonna create a special new event. Now, I am scheduling my conferences for Thursday, October 29th, so I'm gonna click there on my calendar. I'm gonna call this event Parent Teacher Conferences. But I'm not creating a regular event, I'm going to be using the appointment slot option in Google Calendar. Now, this may be new to you, um, and one thing I need to point out this feature, appointment slots, will only appear on your school's G Suite for Education account. If you're using a personal Gmail account, you're not going to see appointment slots. Let's continue configuring this. This allows me to set a um, number of appointment slots in a given duration. So this is going to be taking place on the 29th of October from 5 p.m. until 7 p.m. Uh, again, this is the 29th. 
and these appointment slots are 15 minute increments. Now that matches what is on my Google form. All the appointment slots on my Google form need to also be on my Google calendar. You'll understand why here in a minute. Now I am going to click on more options. There's one final thing that I'm going to do. Don't worry about any of the stuff up at the top, but in the description box, I am going to go ahead and um, paste a um, description. Eventually, parents are going to receive an invitation to this event. Not quite yet, but eventually. And they will see whatever you type in the description box. So I've just gone ahead and typed up kind of a generic um, reminders, tips, how this is going to work. Um, if you look in the description for the video, you'll see a link to my uh, text. You can copy and paste that into your description box, modify it uh, for your own needs. Um, but that'll just save us a little bit of time um, in just a few minutes. Let's go ahead and save this. And we're good to go. Now, let me show you how this works. You can see now on October 29th, I have this unusual event. And when I click on that event, we see of this information, but what we're looking for is this link right here that says go to appointment page for this calendar. I'm going to click on that. Now, my next appointment is on October 29th. So let's go ahead and scroll forward to there. And this is where we'll see those appointment slots. Um, and this matches again what's in my Google form. In step number three, we're going to be assigning each parent to one of these slots and sending them an invitation to join the virtual conference at their selected time. We'll take a look at that in just a minute. All right, we're in the home stretch here, third and final step. This is when we put all the pieces together and actually schedule the virtual conference between the parent and yourself. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually go into my email. Now, if everything is working correctly, you should receive an email like this at some point. This is the confirmation that a parent has signed up for a conference time slot. So this notification again was sent by that form postman add-on. This is just my reminder, hey, new parent, new time slot, time to go. We need to now transfer this information into Google Classroom and schedule the Google Meet virtual conference. So I'm gonna leave this uh, email open. I'm gonna head over to my calendar. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna reserve that time slot. So I'm going to click on uh, the calendar um, appointment slots uh, for the 29th of October. And I'm gonna open up the appointment page for the calendar. Um, scroll forward to find that appointment slot. Now here's where we need to look at that email. Okay, so Mr. Wayne is the parent who's meeting with me. Uh, he has selected the 5 to 5.15 time slot. So I'm gonna go ahead and reserve that now. So that's the very first one, I'm just gonna click and reserve this. So I'm gonna just put his name in uh, this um, description, Mr. Wayne. That's it, okay? I don't have to do anything else and click the save button. Once that time slot has been reserved, it will appear on my calendar. So if I go back to my regular calendar and look on the 29th, there we go, 5 p.m. to 5.15, we can see um, Mr. Wayne has been confirmed. Here's all the information we put in there previously. Final step is to send this to Mr. Wayne so he has the confirmation. So I'm gonna click the edit button. And there's a couple things that I'm going to do here. First, I'm gonna go ahead and enter uh, the parent's email into the guest spot in the calendar. So I'm gonna just copy and paste from the email notification. So uh, Bruce is now um, in as a guest. Second thing is I'm going to click add Google Meet video conferencing. So this is going to be a unique link. Only myself and the parent will be able to join this session. So a public link, no one else can see it unless uh, they receive the email. We're good to go. Um, the third thing you can do, this is optional, um, is modify or add information in the description field. Okay, so we can see, you know, tips, the link is attached, uh, wear earbuds, um, you will be waiting until I join the session, modify any of that. Now, depending on if there are any concerns from the parent, you can go ahead and type some notes in there. Now, the parent will see those, so 
Um, you want to just make sure that you're not taking notes for yourself. They're notes for you and the parent. <clears throat> the other thing that might be helpful is you can use the attachment option of Google Calendar to add any relevant student work, examples, prog progress reports that you want to talk about during the conference. So I'm going to click that pencil or the paperclip icon. Um, I've got a couple things. Uh, so here's a progress report and a couple of work samples that I want to uh, discuss. I'm going to select those and add those uh, to the meeting. Once we've got all of that set up, we're going to go ahead and click the Save button. Now, this is going to prompt us. It's like, would you like to send the invitation to uh, the guests? Yes. So that will send that email. They're going to get a nice um, formatted email with the link to the Meet session, um, tips for joining, um, and then any attachments and additional um, uh, in, um, documents that you provide for the parent. You're good to go. You're done. Now, as those conferences approach, you're going to monitor your calendar. And as 5 p.m. Um, approaches, you're going to click on that calendar event and select the Join with Google Meet button. This will initiate the conference. Now, if Mr. Wayne is present, um, you will be prompted to um, allow him into the meeting once he joins. So I'm going to click Join now. Okay, we're in to the session. Mr. Wayne, uh, the other parents will be able to join you and you're ready to go. Now, I want to show you something really neat. Because of how we did this with Google Calendar, um, if you click the meeting details down um, on the left side, you will see attachments. And any attachments that you have added to your calendar will be listed here, which is a super handy way to have all of your uh, again, permission uh, or um, progress reports, uh, student work samples uh, ready to show uh, the parent without having to you know, dig for them in Google Drive um, while you're in the call with them. So hopefully this has been a helpful uh, summary for you, a helpful process. Again, you can pause, rewind this video as often as possible to get all the steps. Look down in the description for tips, templates, um, and different tools that you can use to uh, improve and make this um, virtual conference season as seamless as possible.